This is the block diagram of the EME system that I'm using here at VE3IKU. Let's just start with the main RF pieces of equipment. There is a down east microwave transverter. Twenty three oh four megahertz to one forty four megahertz. There's a second transverter made by Q five. which is a 144 megahertz to 28 megahertz transverter. And then there is an HF radio, an SDR, an AN 7000 DLE Mark II. There's a unique broadband systems, high power solid state power amplifier LD MOS devices. And then there's an azimuth elevation controller. For controlling the antenna, the dish antenna motors. both azimuth and elevation planes. So there's a 13.8 volt power supply for the Anan, a 13.8 volt power supply for the two transverters, a 12.6 volt power supply for the solid state PA fans and bias circuits and low level stages and microprocessors, and a 30 volt power supply at 80 amperes for the PA stages. Thirty volts at eighty amps is two point four kilowatts, and that's required to produce nine hundred and thirty to a thousand watts uh, in saturation beyond the one dB compression point. In the linear range, the efficiency will drop even further. It's a high efficiency Doherty system. So these are the power supplies that are required to operate the station. And these are the RF blocks and the controller. Let's now go through the receive path. We'll do the switching later. So the feed is a horn feed with a probe, which is basically a horn to coaxial transition. And that signal goes to a low noise amplifier, a filter, another low noise amplifier. The low noise amplifier is a down east microwave, model L13ULNA. It has a gain of 15 dB and a noise figure of less than 0.6 dB. And that second low noise amplifier is a down east microwave MMIC, mimic amplifier. And it has a gain of 17 dB and a noise figure of 1.3 dB. A long coax, 100 feet of times microwave LMR 400 coaxial cable. Another filter, and then the transverter. So that's the 2304 megahertz signal path. The second low noise amplifier is required to overcome the noise figure introduced by this long coax from the antenna to the station. 
And these filters are required to remove uh, Wi-Fi uh, router noises and Sirius XM base stations, which are near my home. So they're seven pole filters, very high Q, uh, 2304 to 2320 megahertz. They can be retuned. The 144 megahertz receive signal then goes into the Q5 transverter and that converts it to 28 megahertz IF and a portion of that is tapped off to the general radio noise meter. This is the general radio 1236 calibrated IF amplifier at 28 megahertz. You can select the bandwidth at 500 kilohertz or 4 megahertz. And it will have a 10 dB scale or a 1 dB scale, depending on the settings, which is very high resolution for determining noise. And that input of that IF amplifier and meter is connected, tapped from the Q5 signal transverter at 28 megahertz. And then the other output goes to the Anan 7000 DLE Mark II SDR. running open HPSDR, power SDR. That's currently the noise floor with the dish pointing straight up, minus 177 dBm per hertz. Fine tuning sun noise and moon noise for optimizing the antenna pointing and the dish feed location uh, and optimizing the system. Now we'll look at the transmit path. The Anand 7000 DLE provides a 28 megahertz transmit signal from its transverter output port, separate ports for receive and transmit. Everything is separate. The Q5 signal transverter then generates a 144 megahertz signal and the down east microwave transverter generates a 2304 megahertz signal from that. There's another filter and the reason is that the local oscillator used in the demi transverter, which is 144 lower than 2304, is significant in strength. And because solid state PAs are wide band devices, it would amplify that signal. We certainly don't want that. So these are, again, a seven pole filter. There's no LO coming out at all after this filter. So it's pure 2304. And uh, there's a medium length run of coaxial cable from the operating desk to the power amplifier room, which is in the furnace room because of its noise and also because of the proximity to the feeds, it's, it's positioned there. Coax is run to the ceiling. The receiver coax and the 28 volt relay wire go straight out. The transmit coax from the transverter comes down to a 10 dB pad at the one watt level and it's uh, fed into the solid-state power amplifier made by Unique Broadband Systems. This is the General Electric 2725 watt power supply, 30 volts at 80 amperes with very, very heavy power cables to power the four PAs. The output of the solid-state power amplifier is temporarily connected to a NARDA directional coupler so I can monitor reflected power from this LMR600 cable, which then is connected to a Heliax AVA 5-50, 49 feet, and then some more LMR600, 25 feet to the dish feed. So there's about a one watt signal here. The strengths can be adjusted in, by adjusting the gains of these transverters. The uh, solid state PA then by Unique Broadband Systems provides close to a kilowatt output, which then goes through a set of coaxes to the transmit probe in the feed and the horn. Now we'll look at the switching arrangement. When you operate the CW key, 
The Anand 7000 DLE goes into semi-break-in mode. A PTT signal is sent to the Q5 signal transverter. There is a sequencer built into this transverter from the factory, and it can be configured in a number of ways, high, low, active. And there are four sequence outputs. The first one is used to generate a 28 volt pulse that would close the relay at the low noise amplifier to connect it to the feed. So in other words, you need 28 volts to operate the LNA. The absence of that voltage, it goes into safe mode. The LNA is terminated in a 50 ohm load. So it's isolated by the relay isolation and the septum feed ports from the transmitter power. So during transmit, that voltage drops to zero, disabling the low noise amplifier power supply and removing the input from the feed. The second step of the sequencer turns on the demi transverter from receive to transmit to enable this red port path. The third part of the sequencer turns on the solid state power amplifier bias. And the fourth step of the sequencer enables the Q5 signal transverter itself to pass RF from the Anan through to the PA and out to the horn. This all happens in about uh, less than 100 milliseconds in those four steps and the reverse of course when you switch back to receive. And once that's switched over then you can send your CW code and then when you release the key after the semi uh, break-in time is over the sequencer then does the reverse turns off the uh, Q5 signal transverter transmit path, then turns off the solid state power amplifier, then turns off the demi transverter and then provides the 28 volt pulse. There's voltage doubler here from the 13.8 volts. That's what that box is. And then that pulses the relay on. And then this settles to 12 volts after the 28 volt pulse because 12 volts is all that's required to continuously hold that relay into the receive port and to operate the low noise amplifiers. Another important feature of the setup is the ability to open this line in the shack momentarily. When that's done, the relay at the low noise amplifier drops out from the feed into the 50 ohm position. And you now have a calibrated 290 degree Kelvin noise source connected to the low noise amplifier, which is at minus uh, 173 dBm per hertz plus the noise of the LNA. And you can calibrate your Anand 7000 on the screen to have that noise floor, minus 174 or whatever it is, dBm per hertz. And then when you just click the uh, power on the transverter on and off quickly, then you have the 28 volt pulse, which puts the LNA back on the feed, which settles down back to 12, holds the relay and powers up the LNAs. And then you can actually hear cold sky noise or sun noise. And then you can actually tell the ratio, the Y factor of how good your receiver is. So it's a very useful feature to have that 28 volt, 12 volt pulsing network, which allows you to operate that relay with one wire and power the LNAs. This is the receive coax from outside the house. And it goes into a seven pole tunable Reactel filter, bandpass filter and then into the down east microwave 2304 to 144 transverter. This wire is the 28 volt, 12 volt pulsing wire that goes to the relay and the low noise amplifiers at the feed. And that's the plug that I can undo it to switch the relay between 290 Kelvin 50 ohm load and the feed when I'm doing calibration on the noise floor. The transmitter signal from the Down East Microwave 2304 transverter goes through another seven pole filter to remove the LO signal. And then off it goes to the other room to the solid state power amplifier. And then the IF outputs and inputs on this transverter are connected to the RF 
inputs and outputs at 144 megahertz on the Q5 signal transverter. And then the 28 megahertz IFs receive and transmit go into the transverter ports on the Anand 7000 DLE. A nice feature of PowerSDR is the ability to configure your transverter. Here you can compensate for the conversion gain of the transverters and the LNA and the coax losses so that the noise floor is the real noise floor as measured at the feed. And the LO frequency can be programmed so that the display even though it's 28 megahertz, 28.02 right now, it actually shows 2304.02, which is great because you can see it directly without having to go through conversions. And the other nice feature is the uh, beacons built into uh, PowerSDR software. This is what I actually send on the beacon transmission. You can adjust the speed and the repeat time. The rotator software is PST rotator, which enables you to track the sun or the moon. You can change the date and the time to see what angles are available, if you can schedule something or not in advance. And then you can reset it back to the PC time. And you can start and stop the actual tracking of the sun or the moon. So currently the moon is below the horizon, but the sun is up. These are the angles. The grayed out zone is the disallow zone because I'm on the uh, south wall of my house and I can't really point the dish north. And that software drives the SPID controller I currently have it set to 90 degrees because we have a snowstorm and the best way to handle the winds is to point the antenna straight up so that the feed is protected, the horn is protected. The horn is pointing down and you have the lowest wind resistance. And this is the power supply for the controller. The controller provides uh, high current on this cable for controlling the elevation and azimuth rotator motors. The Hall effect sensors are on shielded cables, so there's no interaction between elevation and azimuth pulses, and the pulses are counted by the microprocessor, which keeps track of the actual dish position in 0.1 degree increments resolution. That is a complete detailed tour of the EME station here at the E3IKU. Uh, I hope it uh, was useful and thank you very much for watching. 73